Welcome to Face to Face, and today we're going to speak about writing. We're going to speak about uh, a new books coming out. I'm with uh, Lauren, and Lauren, welcome to Face to Face. So thank you, you so much for you have your me. first novel uh, coming out uh, very soon in June, if I understood well. Yes, my first novel, Inconvenient Daughter, is set to be published on June 23rd of this year. Well, how, how did you first? Okay, so how did you end up um, writing? And um, how it's uh, it's like a, a biographical work for you, the writing, or it's um, it's something else? So this book actually started as my thesis for graduate school for my MFA program. And originally it did start out as a memoir. I was writing about myself, but the more I thought about it and the more research I did regarding adoption and how adoptees feel in their lives, the more I realized that this was a story I couldn't tell just about myself. So I had to create the character of Rowan Kelly who's the main character of Inconvenient Daughter, and it's her story. But um, there is some of my experience that I have given to her, of course. So, yeah, so you are an immigrant, you are adopted, you come from South Korea originally, and then so you end up in the U.S. very young, and then so this is a little bit all this uh, who's, um, who we try to, to convey to your book, no? Yes, definitely. Um, I was adopted when I was three months old from South Korea, and my parents are both um, white, so they're not Asian, and uh, they raised me, and that's definitely led to some identity issues for me about what it means to be an American, what it means to be Korean, and how to sort of find the balance between both my cultural identity and my racial identity. No, on top of it, you live in, in Long Island. Who is with a, a close community. I mean, it's a little bit much complicated in Long Island for you than being in the middle of, let's say, Manhattan or some kind of city like this where- Yeah, so... definitely. There wasn't a really large Asian community. Um, it was difficult to find people who looked like me outside of my immediate circle. The only other Asian person I really knew was my brother who was also adopted but there wasn't a huge Korean community that I could sort of go to for advice about what it means to be Korean in America or what it means to not be white in America and to learn more about my culture. And so you think it's a problem of being Korean or, or it's a problem of not being like anybody else in that community? I mean, it's, it's not targeting Korean specifically, but it's more like not being equal to, to the same to the same social groups, no? Yeah, definitely. I think it is about being Asian, though, and what it means to be Asian. You know, um, growing up, like I said, I didn't have a lot of people that looked like me. And I think the people I did meet, I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood, went to a predominantly white high school, and my predominantly white friends had very specific ideas about who I was and things that I was capable of. Like everyone wanted to sit next to me when it came time for math exams, but I'm not great at math. Everyone thought I was going to be a really bad driver, but I can parallel park better oh, so you than had most to, you people had to I know. All these, stereo, all these stereotyped in, into, into from math and all of this? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And people were asking you if you were speaking Chinese and so on and so forth? Yes, I think the most common question I get is, are you Chinese or Japanese? No one ever thinks Korean. <laughs> yeah, this is a problem in, 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 uh, in, in, in this country. It's, as soon as it's outside, it's like, okay, you are from, or you speak Spanish, or you are African, or you, you are Chinese. I mean, it's like three countries in the world. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> So, um, so, but, um, okay, so between that experience as, um, as a young uh, American, um, how did you end up writing? I mean, usually it doesn't end up like that. I mean, few people go to writing to, to, to transform their experience. Well, I always wrote in journals since I was really little. You know, I always enjoyed reading, and I think reading makes you a writer. Um, the more books you read, the more in tune you are to language, the more you develop a sense of how to tell a story, to tell your story. 
and I just felt like there was a story inside of me that I needed to share with the world and this was it. And so to, to go back, I just had you know, a weird question in my, in my head. It's uh, with your parents. How is your relationship with the parents? How do they deal with, with that uh, process for you? Well, um, I wasn't the easiest teenager to deal with, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I definitely gave my mom a, a tough time growing up. Um, my relationship with my father has always been easy. It's always been really effortless. And I think the relationship between mothers and daughters is something that scientists will always study. want, to, <laughs> want to study. Yeah. It's a really unique relationship. and. I think that as time has gone on, my mother and I have been able to get that closeness. But I think growing up, my mother so desperately wanted to protect me from anything that could hurt me in this world. You know, she wanted to protect me from boys who might take advantage of me or for people from people who might not be kind to me or the world that wouldn't be kind to me. And I think in her quest to protect me from all those things she wound up making me go towards those things and um you know i think it's difficult for an adoptee because most of most adoptees are adoptees because of a decision that their biological mother made you know and not knowing my biological mother that bond is broken you know and i felt that growing up my mother who suffered from infertility issues and is the reason those fertility infertility issues were the reason that my parents chose to adopt the way my adoption was communicated to me being the result of infertility really informed how i thought about myself and how i valued myself and i always seemed to take it out on my mother for some reason you know because she was always the one calling the shots and making the rules. <laughs> but my relationship with her now is really amazing. And um, I think it's partially because I'm older, but more also because I finally moved out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> that was your way of reconciliation with your, yes, with your definitely. mother. <laughs> I see. Okay, so um, now let, let's, let's move to the book. The book, how the book came about. I mean, you explained a little bit about, about the process, but to from there to publish a book, it, it's uh, it, it's escape. Then um, I want to understand a little bit more. You can describe it. Um, so as I said before, this uh, book, the first draft of this book was actually my thesis for graduation that I had sent to my thesis advisor. And then uh, she had replied with a publishing contract after I sent it to her. So, um, oh, wow. my path, yeah, my that path was, was that was, that was <laughs> <laughs> it's very few, <laughs> few, few people who, uh, who do uh, this type of, of work and get a uh, yeah. contract on the, lay on the next day. Wow, congratulations! Yeah, it wasn't definitely the next day, but um, it was a couple of weeks after that. Um, we had worked on it for a really long time, and she had been with me since the beginning. Um, since we had just started talking about this idea of what this book might be. And then uh, when I finally sent her the finished draft, she was like, we need to put this book out into the world. And I was not expecting it at all. <laughs> well, you got, you got good congratulations because it's really, it's very tough. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's very tough, tough environment to be tough. able to publish a book. <laughs> What was the process after the thesis? What you had to rewrite, you had to develop the characters and so on and so forth? So there were definitely some developmental issues, issues with the timeline and the structure of the book that needed to be sort of redeveloped and reworked. And then it went to a group of editors who I'll be eternally grateful for the rest of my life, who really took it to that next level and polished it out. And then um, it went for page proofs. Which oh, so, so they didn't destroy the books, <laughs> the editor. Because <laughs> usually you have big tension between the, the author and the editors and it, it gets very complicated. So for you, it was actually a good experience. I think it's because um, I had known the editors for some time before um, this had happened and they were familiar with my work and familiar with the story that I was trying to tell and really 
cognizant of the importance and the sensitivity of the issues that I was tackling. So that made it a much more cohesive and like really wonderful process. So um, if you had to, to describe to someone in two minutes, what is the book about? How did you go about it? Um, I would say it's about a transracial adoptee who's trying to find love herself and where she belongs in the world. And through that journey, she also winds up finding herself. Very good. And now, what is the plan with, with that book? I mean, how do you see the, the future for you? Um, well, I'm actually working on a second book right now. It's different and separate from this character from Rowan. And it centers around uh, three sisters who are adopted who go in search of their biological mother. So hopefully I'll be able to put that one out into the world too. Oh, wow. You are very productive. And actually, <laughs> it's, I think it's good for you to do the second one now before the first one is out. So you don't, you, you don't uh, go to uh, either if it's working to become like uh, lazy in some ways. And then right. if it's, it's like not muscle, working to work become depressed <laughs> <laughs> and not want to do anything anymore. So that's a good strategy. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's just been good to throw myself into like another project. And it's a project I'm really excited about and that I'm doing a lot of research for. So it's allowed me to sort of travel outside my immediate area while still being inside. So but it's a fiction? It's going to be a fiction or it's going to be? Yeah, a... it's going to be fiction. It's going to be fiction. So it's not related to any stories or a situation you know? Uh, no, it just sort of came to me in the shower of all places. <laughs> Anything you want to plug or any, any information you want people to know? We are, uh, we are running out of time. Um, I would just say thank you for having me first and foremost and to pre-order Inconvenient Daughter from your favorite local indie bookstore. And uh, thank you so much for being on, the, on Face to Face. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you so much for having me, David. This was wonderful. That was Face to Face. And please keep watching your news on Presenza.com. And uh, hope to hear and uh, to see you very soon. Thank you very much.